Well, for the first time in history, a private company has been granted permission to head to the moon. The company Moon Express plans to send an unmanned lander about the size of a suitcase to the moon by the end of next year. Their goal is to exploit the moon's resources, for example, moon rocks, metals, and helium, and then bring them back to Earth. I'm joined now via Skype by CBS News senior space consultant Bill Harwood. Okay, Bill, explain to us why is this such a significant move for a private company to be given the green light to land on the moon? Well, you know, interestingly, if you think about it, back in 1966, the United States, the Soviet Union, other countries signed something called the Outer Space Treaty, which says that no nation, no one nation can claim another body in the solar system for its own, claim sovereignty. Uh, but nothing was really spelled out about private industry. And so what's happened here is Moon Express has worked through the FAA to develop a regulatory process to win that approval, and the FAA ultimately granted that, giving them formal government approval uh, to launch a private mission to the moon. That's a first. And I think that obviously will open the door uh, for future uh, similar uh, goals by other entrepreneurs down the road. But this is the first one, and I think getting the regulatory system in place might have been one of the biggest uh, uh, hurdles they faced. Okay, Moon Express has, expe has expressed their own interest in mining the moon's resources. What kind of resources are we talking about? How valuable might they be? Well, potentially very valuable. You know, up in the permanently shadowed craters at the poles of the moon, there's quite a bit of ice, scientists believe. And of course, if you've got ice and you've got solar power, you can take that apart. You can, you can get hydrogen for rocket fuel. You can get water for astronauts to drink or to use for other purposes. You can get air. You know, if you think about it, it's sort of like living off the land. If you don't have to bring that up from Earth, that's a huge advantage. And of course, as you mentioned earlier, there are other resources on the moon. Helium-3, for example, is a is, a, is an isotope that could be used in fusion reactors if they are ever developed down the road, uh, a potential supply of that, and then, of course, minerals. Now, I've got to caution everyone, you know, building a small spacecraft and actually getting it to the moon as a private endeavor is certainly impressive, but extending that to actually extracting resources, making that a profitable enterprise, getting them back to Earth or anywhere else you need to get them in the solar system, that's a huge step. This is a small step forward, but, but really... I think it's a, you have to take a wait and see attitude to see if they can make this pay off. I can't help but wonder, do you expect other private companies to follow suit? I do. You know, I think the key to this is cheaper, you know, less expensive transportation off the planet. If people can build rockets, they can get payloads into space cheaply, I think that'll open a floodgate. You know, right now it costs an enormous amount of money to build rockets. Elon Musk and SpaceX has done a lot to lower that cost, but it's going to have to come down more. Uh, to make this a, a, a paying enterprise for multiple companies. Bill Harwood, thank you for your time, Bill. Sure thing.